Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs. Welcome back to a brand new video tutorial and a new collection. So today I want to introduce you to the Art Play Palette Sachet collection and you can see a preview of that on my screen. Typically there are five products involved with that and I'm going to walk you through those, show you what's included in the collection, talk a little bit about the inspiration behind this particular digital art collection, and then also show you some layouts and suggest some ways in which you can use the digital designs included in the Art Play Palette Sachet release. So this collection was inspired by this photo. It was sent to me by one of my creative team members, Beverly Cazell. And love the colors, of course, very springy. I actually lived in Japan for about three years, about 17 years ago. In fact, my daughter Ella was born there and she turned 17 this summer. We were there on military assignment with my husband and we actually got to go to a lot of these beautiful cherry blossom festivals. So there was a personal connection here. I have a very vivid memory of being six months pregnant. And so of course, with it being our first child, Eric and I had the freedom to just kind of wander around the food festival and through the parks where these beautiful trees were blooming. And I just remember how peaceful it was sitting on this bench and in fact I needed to take a nap being six months pregnant it was quite warm so I remember laying down with my head in Eric's lap and, and falling asleep underneath these cherry blossoms so it was a real joy for me to receive this photo and incorporate some of those memories that I have um, that are specific to this cherry blossom theme to this collection. Now this collection isn't specifically for cherry blossoms or photos in Japan. I always try to think of other ways that you could use these particular art pieces in your designs and I'm going to suggest some of those as we make our way through the products. So let's go ahead and do that right now. You can see I've got the five folders on my screen and you'll down those in the form of zip files. So let's go and head into Artplay Palette Sachet which is delivered into two folders. You'll have to excuse the black background here. It has something to do with Windows 10 and sometimes it appears and sometimes it doesn't, but it shouldn't affect the way that I am able to show these files to you. So let's head into the first folder, folder A, and this includes the papery, the elements, and the brush sets. And I always start with the papery. It's what I create first in one of these collections. And you can see that we have four artsy papers, and they are all based around these very soft blues, purples, some lilac, and then also some white. I really like the pop of white. It makes these pieces relevant to the part of the world that I live in. We of course do get a lot of snow here in the spring, but I also think that white really does brighten up your pages. It's a, it's a great way to add highlights to a design and, and create some contrast and visual interest. And then we've got some really fun blossom vintage images that have a bit of a twist in that they're not necessarily traditionally colored. So we've got some great pinks and purples and, and some kind of more of jade green colored leaves as opposed to the apple green leaves that you might see on a cherry blossom tree. I've also included some lace. You'll notice that this particular collection has some vintage text and also some embossed postcards, vintage postcards in them with this aged yellow look. And I really like bringing together the old and the new. It's sort of repurposing some of that great vintage art from our pasts. So this collection would be great also for your heritage and ancestry projects. You could bring those in and incorporate those. 
I also kind of see a couple of landscapes in here too. I think this has a very mountain landscape feel to it. And then this one almost looks like a lake, this horizontal line or texture that comes through the piece almost suggests a body of water or a lake there could be some sort of forest in the background here with the suggestion of the tree i like the pops of the red that brings in visual interest and allows the eye to bounce between the two so you could pretty much blend any landscape photo in the back here this one too has the suggestion of perhaps some water. I like how this peters out and I like the lines which are very suggestive of uh, a mountain or an outdoorsy theme. But I think also too the colors in these, the grays and the tones and then the warmer tones too would make them very applicable to other travel photos such as la um, such as architecture in cities. And then of course you've got the theme of spring and Easter and also the pinks are very suggestive of girls and females. So you can celebrate perhaps Mother's Day that's coming up or grandmothers in these pages. So lots of ideas here for how you could use this collection. I've got a couple of coordinating or several coordinating backgrounds here. I really like the dotted texture on this particular lilac paper. And of course, there's no stains on here. So you could use that in your project life or your photo inspired, and you could easily recolor any of these papers to fit with other collections that you have in your stash. So let's go ahead and take a look at the brush set that comes with this. This is the brush set preview, lots of different types of brushes. There's a total of 16 in this collection, a variety of art strokes and stains, some textures here. This would make a really great blending brush. I love how the flower and part of the lace is on there. So you could impart some really great textures into your custom blending. This would make a really nice motif placed behind a blended photo or from behind a framed image even. And then um, some great edges here to embellish those papers that are in the papery folder. A fun twist on a stain here includes a silhouette of that same cherry blossom and some fun textures. This would be great around a curved art stroke so you could line up the edge of the texture with the art stroke and add some really fun texture to those art strokes and curves that are already existing within the artsy papers and the transfers. Another fun texture brush, I like this tiny piece of text here and the splatters and then it has kind of a textured watery feel to it. Another great blossom motif with the interest of the lace and the paper textures. Another fun blending brush here with a bit of lace on the edge an edge here. This would be great also not only to embellish the corner of a paper but you could also use it with a layer mask and brushes to add an impression onto your photo in terms of blending. So lots of really fun ways to use these brushes. I'm excited to use them myself. Again nice curves here which can be used to support the curves in your artistry interesting splatters and textures and these are included in two different formats this means that the brushes go beyond 2500 pixels if you're working in previous versions of Photoshop or earlier versions of Elements you'll want to use the regular ABR file but if you're using one of the newer versions of Photoshop so that's Photoshop CC or Photoshop Elements 15 and higher then you have the option to use these brushes in a larger format and I was asked as to why you would use the ABR file over the PNG files. I think it comes down to personal preference. I personally like to load the ABR files into my art into my brushes panel because this allows me greater flexibility to rotate and change the size of the brush on the fly as opposed to using it with the transform tool and I hope to be able to demonstrate that in an upcoming video. 
So let's head back into the elements. I always include some dimensional elements. These have got a nice vintage feel. I love the clock here kind of expresses the notion of time, which is something that we all think about as memory keepers when we're working with family photos that time flies so quickly. And I really love this vintage corner piece. There's a couple of buttons and then we've got different elements in these frames here. This egg was a fun one. Great way to introduce the Easter theme into this palette. And then of course, a fun paper cherry blossom. And you can see that there is the accompanying shadow. So if you're not working in Photoshop or Photoshop elements and you're working in a different version, then you can layer these two elements together to create a dimensional element. And then of course, for those of you working in Photoshop or elements, you can open up this file and you can add blending modes to the shadow or you can change the color or the opacity of it. It just allows for a lot more customization Let's now head into the Art Play Palette Sachet Part B. It's the second folder and look at the transfers and overlays and you can see that there are a total of 12 different types. We have a preview of those here and then another preview down at the bottom. These are all delivered in PNG format, so they all have a transparent background with varying degrees of transparency. And I'm always asked what's the difference between a transfer and overlay. And really it's just the level of transparency and me not wanting to label all of the elements as transfers one, two, three, four, five, all the way through 12. So it creates some differentiation. So those elements that have slightly more transparency are usually given the title overlay and then those with a little bit more chunkiness to them, they have the transfer. And if you're interested in learning how to place these transfers on the solid background papers that are in the papery folder, then I highly recommend my Artsy Doubles workshop, which is available from the store at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. And I will place a link to that course below this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other products in this collection. We've got the Coordinating Artsy Layered Template. And this, of course, is a layered PSD file for use in Adobe Photoshop or Elements. And you can see that all of the background artistry is included. You simply just have to add in the solid paper of your choice, change the title, personalize the journaling and then clip photos to the frames. And these two images are not included with your download, but they're available in the gallery at O Scraps. And these are two pages created by members of the Anna Aspinus Designs team. So we have this one here, which I believe is by Margot. Margada, if you're looking at her gallery at O Scraps, and you can see how she's added those photos in there and she added in some extra embellishment. And I love how she's put this tree behind the photos to sort of mat her images and bring everything together. She's also added in a couple of extra transfers from different art play palettes. And then another version here by Viv Halliwell. She has gone a little bit more simpler with her design simply by adding just the photos and a variety of the elements. I love how she's created a cluster with the blossom and the title and the ribbon. And she's added this really cool sticker effect. And I show you how to do this in the Title Smarts workshop, which is available from the Anna Aspinus Design Stores. You can, I will also link that up down below this video. Another small detail here that I really like is the fact that she's taken one of the multimedia files, one of the file tabs, and she's made it really, really small and she's kind of tucked that behind the photo. So by decreasing the size, you can repurpose elements. 
And then we have these linear photo blends and I have an event coming up in May in which I'm going to be showing you some really cool ways to use these photo blends in your pages. And these photo blends coordinate with the multimedia document. So we have two different folders for those and I have grouped all the layers together. I do actually include the PSD file as well as the PNG files. This allows those of you working outside of Photoshop in other versions of software to assemble these layers as you wish. So here is the preview. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you can see there are four different elements here. All of those elements are contained within different folders and you can see how I've blended in the edges of some of these old vintage pieces so that they blend into your papers. And each of these elements is designed to work with one of the papers in the art play palette sachet. So a lot of coordination, these products will work together with one another, but you will also find that they work with other products in your digital art stash. And then finally, we have some spring word art. Fairly straightforward here, you simply take a selection of different titles. So we've got a beaded threads here, we've got some standard word art titles combining a couple of different fonts, some word transfers, and then some wooden elements. And the idea is, is to bring a couple of these elements, usually three of them together to create a really interesting title. And then I've also included the word transfers and the word art titles as an EBR file as well so that you can use them with the paintbrush tool in Photoshop and Elements and stamp them onto new layers in your designs. So that is this week's collection. And this week I asked via Instagram and Facebook which layout you would like to see deconstructed in this video. And the winner was this particular page by Margot, one of the newer members of our design team. And I have prepped this layout so that I could show you in terms of folders how this page is being put together. So I thought this was a really fun idea. I love how Margot has taken the multimedia files and she sort of knitted them together and layered them and pieced them to create a foundation for her design. And what this does is it creates a focal point onto which she can place her photos to draw the eye in and lead the eye around her design. So let's go ahead and turn off some of these folders so that I can show you how this piece was put together. So she started with a 12 by 12 blank canvas and then she introduced the background papers. And if I go ahead and open up this folder, she did something really interesting. She selected solid paper number one from Artplay Palette Sachet. She then introduced solid paper number four and she applied a linear burn blending mode. So this is the original paper and then she went ahead and applied a different blending mode and what that does is it blends those two papers together so that you get that underlying texture showing through. It also imparts the texture to the underlying paper and it creates this really interesting color. So that was the background. She then created her matte foundation. And so she did this with three of the element files. And what she did, she took the PSD file and she merged some of the layers together and then she brought them onto her canvas. So she placed one here, one here, and then one on top like that. So notice how it creates a nice sort of square shape with the frame of the background around the edges. And it's not completely uniform, which gives it some visual interest. And it provides a focal point on which to place her photos. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next folder. This is where she added her focal photo. So this is the most important photo of her page. 
And for this, she placed one of the linear photo blends. Notice how she's placed it at an angle. This provides visual interest and it also mirrors some of the other angles that we have in the design. Notice that not every single line is either completely perpendicular in terms of being horizontal or vertical. There's definitely some rotation to some of these pieces. She then went ahead and clipped her photo to the mask and she did this by placing the photo over the top of the mask and going to layer create clipping mask. It doesn't cover the edges of the mask but in terms of this design that doesn't matter. If you find yourself in this position and it does matter to you, you simply select the move tool from the tools panel ensure that that bounding box option is checked so that you can see the bounding box around the image and then you can increase the size of the photo in order to cover the mask she then added some tape to adhere her blended image to her foundation Next, she added in some supporting photos, and this is where the need for covering that mask completely goes away. Let's go ahead and take a look what we have going on in this grouping. First, she placed another one of the multimedia elements, and again, she's merged those together, and this rose piece with the button and the stitching on the paper in the background covers up the majority of that exposed photo blends clipping mask. She then added photos and she created oval shapes. So she used this elliptical marquee tool to make selections, oval selections of her photos and then she placed them in the oval areas of the frame. She then recolored the stain and added a hard mix blending mode. So you can see there's the original and then let's go down to hard mix, makes it much lighter. And then she added in another photo in the background here and applied a levels to increase the contrast of one of her images. Notice how this creates a nice visual triangle and how these smaller images support her focal image. The next step was to add in some embellishment. And so you can see that she did this with a personalized piece of memorabilia, some tape, some blossoms, and then also the stitching at the top here. And then she finally completed her design with the title. And this was taken from the spring word art mix that's included with this collection and that completed her page. I have a couple of other team layouts that I want to share with you. This first one is by Adrienne and she's followed a very similar approach in that she's created a central foundation for her photos. She's then clipped her images to the photo blends clipping masks which coordinate with the underlying multimedia layers. I like how she's layered and used blending modes in this particular composition. Our next layout is by Ella May. And I did have a question about the usage of the linear photo blends in this design. And it's been very cleverly done in that she has used the linear photo blends in its original format. So the edges are perpendicular to the edges of her canvas. But it looks as though she may have angled this linear photo blends. So she sort of tricked the eye by placing the elements either side of her photo to strengthen this diagonal line that runs through her design. So very cleverly done, but she's actually just clipped the photo to that linear photo blends in its standard format. Barbara always does some really fun things with her designs and here she has not only 
applied photos to the photo blends but she's also had some fun with some blending modes and what this does is it intensifies some of the colors in her photos making them much richer and more vibrant. I love how she's used the art stroke here to encircle this area of her image. Notice too how she's aligned the branch with the base of her design. This window photo goes really well with the new linear photo blends because the lines align with those in the clipping masks. Mikey always does some really great work and I like the visual triangle that she's created with the element clusters on her page. And then finally, Lindy has mixed and matched the multimedia elements with the frame from the Artplay palette to create her own custom multimedia element. And she's topped that off with a really sweet photo and also a word art cluster. Notice how she's taken, as I suggest, three different pieces of those word arts and she's placed them together. Also note too how she's recolored that word art title to coordinate with the navies and the darker purple and blue tones in her photo. And this is where it's beneficial to use that ABR file with the paintbrush tool in that you can simply stamp that title directly onto a new layer in your canvas in the color of your choosing, as opposed to dragging that PNG file into your layout and then recoloring using the edit fill option. So lots of fun ideas in this session to delight and inspire you. Head on over to the Anna Aspinus Design Store at Oscraps where this collection is available in two different ways. You can purchase the products individually at a 20% discount for one week only or you can acquire the complete collection at a discount of 48%. After that week, this bundle option goes away, but the individual products will remain in the Anna Aspinus design store. Once you have all of these digital art goodies in your possession, then you are free to indulge in a little art play. And I'm hoping that this video will provide some direction, perhaps some ideas and some inspiration for you to follow in creating your next digital artistry or scrapbooking page. Thank you for being here. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment letting me know what you would like to see next, or even some feedback about the video, how I can make these videos better and more inspirational to you. Have a great week, and I hope to be back in this space again very soon.